Hi everybody, this afternoon I want to talk to you about the Kriegoff K80 Parkour. This isn't a new gun on the market by any stretch. The big news now is all about the X-Gun. But I had an interesting experience. I was kind of thinking of the X-Gun might be the best for me. And I was able to get my hands on one. And that thing was pretty darn heavy in the front end. And also it had a, the new X rib, which is quite wide, and I didn't like the X rib. So that put me back into parkour mode. Now, if you've read all the propaganda on the parkours, you'll know that this gun weighs just slightly over eight ounces, or eight ounces, eight pounds, which is, well, this one was eight pounds, 9.6 ounces. So that's just slightly over eight pounds. And the barrels are supposed to be a miraculous 1470, I think, for the 34s, which this is. And the barrels were 1536. So this is not the gun that you've read about. And all you have to do is take them apart, put them on the scales to find out what's going on with them. I got the 34 inch gun. It's a demo gun, so I can keep it if I want to or send it back otherwise, which is kind of nice when you're spending that much money that you really shouldn't be spending on a gun. But uh, I thought with the barrels that light, it would be nice to have the 34 inch barrels. I've never had a 34 inch gun either. I'm kind of a small guy, 5'8", 200 pounds and short arms and small hands. So I don't normally go for the bigger guns and sometimes think I would be better off with 30 inch barrels than 32s. Uh, but based on the weight predictions, I found this 34 from a good friend of mine, a great dealer, Rob Carlson in Wisconsin. You just can't beat dealing with Rob. There's some other really good Kriegoff dealers too, but I'll give Rob a plug here because he sent me the gun after I sent him a bunch of money. Anyhow, <laughs> uh, the, the, the weight issue was pretty problematic when I got it out of the case. There's a lot of difference between just a little over eight and eight pounds, 9.6 ounces, which made it the heaviest gun I had by a couple of ounces. Nicely balanced though, uh, had, had a good feel to it. You hear all this stuff about the parkour barrels being whippy and they needed to make them heavier for people. And at 1536, I have a hard time going with that. As I said, I have short arms. My front hand has to be back on the forearm. If I get out here, I'm in big trouble. And if it's a high target, I've got to be in here to get the room I need to mount the gun. And uh, because of that, the balance point for me can be different than it would be for somebody else. If you've got gorilla arms and you're clear out here on the front of the forehand, then maybe it's whippy. If you're a slam the gun to your shoulder and swing like heck trying to catch targets, swing through shooter, then maybe it's whippy. But I can tell you, if you like to shoot, uh, start in out in front, pull away in that neighborhood, this gun is not light and whippy. And it is the standard parkour. So the the X-Gun almost seems a cure to a non-existent problem. The X-Gun I had, to be fair, had been custom stocked, so didn't feel it normally like it would. And frankly, uh, the stock that was on it was so high. The fellow that had it has very little drop, six tenths, I think he said. And it, so it didn't fit me at all. But the other thing that got me thinking is I have a friend who has a parkour, standard parkour, and he's got an ISIS on the back end. I bumped into him at a shoot and just said, hey, can I see your parkour? And he handed it to me and I thought, this is the heaviest eight pound gun I've ever had a hold of. And we know the ISIS doesn't add a whole bunch of weight. So it wasn't the, the idea that it had a heavy recoil reducer on it. Didn't have my scales, couldn't weigh it or anything. But if he thinks he's shooting an eight pound gun, I pity him if he ever gets a nine pound gun because it's gonna feel like a battleship. Now, what is there about the parkour that's so delightful? Well, you know, you have to like the features of it. So let's talk about them from the butt first. Comes with a number six kickies pad, three quarter inch pad, uh, nicely fit, although the grind marks are still in the base pad, which for a gun that costs this much, I don't quite understand. One and a half by two inch drop. The offset is said to be a quarter it's at least that it might be just a touch more with my stick it looked like you could almost give it credit for another 16th and uh for me i need a lot of offset 
The problem is, and this is a long way from just Kriegoff doing it, but if you look at how close the cut for the comb is to the comb nose, if you have to set this over, you then get the sharp edge on the, the bottom of the comb digging into your hand. And frankly, it's uncomfortable. I don't know why companies do that, but they insist on doing it. If your comb has to move sideways within the range of your hand, that should be rounded. Better yet, just move the cut back a half inch and it'll clear. You can push your comb all the way over and never run into anybody's hand. So that's my pet peeve here with the, the stock. Uh, if I'm careful with it, I can avoid it. But when I had the comb over, frankly, I didn't enjoy shooting it all that much. You can see the checkering pattern there, nicely done. I, some people get excited about checkering panels. I don't, but this one's certainly comfortable. And I'll, I'm sitting under a pine tree, so I gotta clear my barrels. I'll flip it over there. And you can see the other side is not quite as fully checkered. Small grip, which I like with my small hands. The palm swell is not nearly as big as some palm swells you might see which again is good for me. Uh, I'd love to have the comb nose back a half inch and then have that nose on the comb back, but that ain't gonna happen. I've been known to do it on guns, but I probably won't do it on this one because it costs so stinking much. Uh, 13, 695 is the retail on this gun. So throw in shipping. If you get stuck with sales tax, you're probably at 14 and a half. So it's a significant investment. And little things like that should be taken care of. Now, a couple of features I wasn't aware of on the K80 Action because I'd never really been around one. I got to shoot one a couple of times in my life, but I don't live in Kriegoff country. Uh, the safety can be locked on with just a set screw on the side of the action here. I'd pull the stock and show you, but I'm out on the range and I don't want it falling in the dirt. So you'd have to take my word for it. The trigger has quite a curve to it, different than most triggers. Uh, I'm really getting to like it. Uh, you may, you may not, but be aware it's there. The trigger link, the pull is adjustable by the back screw that you see here. It's a 1.3 metric. And uh, the nice thing, I, mean, I really like this, tell you how sick my mind is. You see the bow on the trigger guard is rather elongated. My Allen wrenches are fairly small. So I can put it in the screw hole and I can rotate it through the trigger guard and I have to keep going in and out and in and out. And when you're as blind as I am up close, you can appreciate that in a hurry. The front screw will lock the barrel selector in one position or the other, should you choose to do so. I've never wanted that on a gun, but it's here. The action itself is interesting. I've weighed a lot of actions. I'm curious about how they put them together. And you can find, uh, Oh, like the standard Zoli action is about 32 ounces. The Evo then with the heavy side plates to be about 34. Uh, my Yildiz uh, MX-12 copy is 35 ounces. And a Kohler, if you wonder why Kohlers feel the way they feel, is 41 ounces, 41 point, uh, I can't remember right now, but anyway, over 41 ounces for just the receiver. So that's a lot of weight in the middle of the gun. Really curious about the Kriegoff, and I finally have my question answered. It was 37.4 ounces in the middle. So just a little more, even though you've got a long action. If you pull this apart, and I have a still shot, I'll try to figure out how to drop in in my editorially challenged uh, skills with the video programs. We'll show you the intricacies of the K80 action. I'm kind of used to the uh, Zoli action. I've been shooting that for years, and I mean, the parts are substantial, not going to wear out, and uh, not that many of them. The K80 is designed with a bunch of little parts in there. Hammers and sears are fairly narrow, which, you know, the gun's not wide, and they've got to fit from both sides in there, and uh, lots of pins and stuff. So you can see where some of the price could come from on a Kriegoff simply because they have to drill so many little holes for all the pins that they have. Triggers are mechanical. Now they say they're three and a half to four pounds. I haven't weighed this yet. I'm thinking it's probably closer to four than three and a half. Uh, they have a different feel to them. 
not a bad feel. Uh, you know, some might like it better than others. Some may love it, but it's just a little bit different feel that you can adjust to pretty quickly. I've got rheumatoid arthritis. You've probably heard me say that before. My hands suck, to be honest about it. And sometimes I have a hard time pulling the trigger. If I pay attention to my back hand, I don't get that with the grip size and the extra purchase that's there with this heavily curved trigger, which is kind of nice. But if I go brain dead, slip my thumb over the top of the wrist, like I dearly love to do, I will probably have a trigger pull problem and I'm gonna shoot high because the gun doesn't come up clean. That's not just the Krieg off, that's anything. I've gotta have my thumb down on the side here of the grip so I can get that clean mount to my face. Barrels, as I said, are 1536. That's 54 and I can't remember how many tenths of an ounce. Um, if you look at the Kriegoff propaganda, which I did, I was all over the place looking for everything Kriegoff I could find before I committed to start this project. <laughs> the, the Kriegoff catalog says that all their barrels weigh 49 ounces in the parkours. And... Uh, that would seem to be a bunch of hooey. So I don't know why they don't correct that. Sometimes the, the marketing people are laying out the catalog, get the info before they have the guns to work with, but that's not the case with the parkour. It's been around for quite a few years. So I don't understand that at all, but that's the case. If you look in the catalog, it will say 49 ounces, and this one is well over 54 ounces. And the K80 barrels are more like 59 ounces, I believe. So anyway, it is a mid-range gun, but it narrows the range for the uh, X gun to fall into to fit. And if you have a, a parkour that weighs eight pounds, eight pounds, two or three ounces, good for you. I mean, I, you know, I'm not saying they're not out there, but I'm saying this gun's a long way from that, and so is the gun my friend has. Uh, to me, that's actually a benefit, but had I known, I'd have probably got 32-inch barrels just to cut down the front end weight just a tad bit. And we go on out here, nothing too spectacular. Of course, the barrels are, have side ribs on them, which is the whole purpose. Get the little mid bead there. And you have a, probably the, yeah, see if I got long enough arms to get these 34 inch barrels in here. You probably have the brightest white front sight I've ever seen, which I actually don't care for at all. And it's uh, fairly big for a 34 inch barrel. I thought it'd be a little speck out there, but you'll have no trouble seeing that. Now, Kriegoff does offer a smaller bead, which is a, a nice forethought, but the thing's 27, 28 bucks plus the shipping. So it ain't a cheap bead. And part of the reason for that goes back to the Kriegoff detail. Here we go, trying to get in again. Uh, there you can kind of see that screw in the top of the front sight. To mount the front sight, you just set it on the gun and then put the screw in and uh, you're done. So is that easier than any of the traditional tap the ribs and screw it in kind of deals? I don't know, but you don't have to mar the rib surface at all. And Dieter Kriegoff, quite honestly, says that they treat this gun as a prestige item. They're not looking to sell it to everybody hunting grouse or anything else. It's a it's a, a goal gun. It's one that you work towards in your shooting career, unless you just happen to have a lot of bucks up front. I can't believe how many young kids there are shooting $15,000 Kriegoffs. The standard gun has the blued top latch and the blued pins. You can get an upgrade package, so it's all nickel should you choose to do so. It's about $600 more if I remember correctly. And then we can talk about engraving. The Kriegoff receiver is a fairly substantial flat slab of metal. And if that were plain, I'd be butt ugly. No, I mean, it might work great, but it'd be butt ugly because it's just too big, too shiny. So this is a standard engraving, which I think is quite nice. Nothing super fancy, but certainly fills in the spaces and looks, looks attractive, looks more than presentable. Uh, and from there, how much do you want to spend? You know. You can spend it. They will get it engraved, custom engraving, or their standard patterns that are higher grade, and you can spend as much money on a Kriegoff as you want to. I'm sure if you said, we want to spend a million dollars, that they would build you a million dollar Kriegoff. 
as it is, it's pretty easy to find fifty, sixty thousand dollar ones. Let's talk wood grade for a little bit. This is seems to be a pretty well standard piece for um, a parkour. Little bit of grain to it, nothing fancy. Uh, I looked at a lot of guns, a lot of size, went every place I could because I'm a, a wood junkie. I couldn't find anything that I would say was substantially better than this. Some of them have a little bit of figure. But what that does mean is, as you can see with this one, the grain flow is pretty straight. So you should have a good strong piece of wood. It also means that the weight from gun to gun is probably not going to be significantly affected by the density of the wood. Maybe a couple ounces, but I've got a, a uh, Zoli stock that's exhibition grade, frankly, and uh, it's about eight ounces heavier than some of their standard grade stocks. So with that in mind, I think what you see here is pretty well what you can expect in a parkour. If those barrels are 1536 and the 34 inch, then your gun is going to be somewhere around 8.7 to 8.10. Might vary slightly. You might have noticed the uh, shiny part on the recoil pad here, just so you have no doubts about what's going on. I put a strip of tape, I anchor it underneath the pad so the screw pressure holds it down and then bring it over and around the corner and then wrap it on the bottom and anchor it underneath the pad again. I shoot everything low gun and I don't want the gun to hang up and that keeps it from happening and this will stay on for a long, long time. I've wrapped them in the past and tried to do all kinds of uh, harebrained stunts to keep from catching, but this is the best idea I've ever had when it comes to that. You just, again, you know, cut it a little bit long, angle it from the back, wrap it over the top, down, and then wrap it back up on the other side. Now, an 8 tenths kickies and 3 quarter inch electrician's tape works great. The 6 tenths pad with the 3 quarter inch electrician's tape, you get a little wrinkle you might see there. Uh, like up here over the, the top, right in there. And there might be a little one at the bottom. And if that really bothers you, don't put it on. But if your gun mount hangs up, don't blame me. Okay, what other things could we talk about with the Kriegoff? I mean, the gun's been around forever, the K80. It's the old Remington 32 and then the K32 and progressed on. So no matter what gun you buy, no matter how the engraving is done, how extensive, how much money you spend, the heart and soul of this thing is exactly the same. Never changes. So don't think you're buying better in size if you spend more money. Uh, of course, you got the service issue with uh, Kriegoff. They recommend the updates or the, the uh, servicing of them every 20 to 30,000 rounds, which when you look inside and you see the uh, Oh, the, the, I hate to call the parts delicate. I mean, they're in there pounding for tens of thousands of shots, but you can see where with the smaller area, smaller surface area, you could get somewhere, and it's just a good idea to get somebody in there that knows what they're doing to check it out and, and go from there. I would do the obligatory go out and show you shooting me a few clays with it, but it wouldn't make any difference. Trust me, the gun goes off when you pull the trigger. And... Uh, I've seen some mounts that are so flippin' ugly doing that that I don't know what mine would look like, but if it looked that bad, I'd be humiliated. So uh, it uh, seems we've trans, uh, transposed from a move mount shoot technique to most shooters now seem to slam it on their shoulders and then swing, 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 swing. And I'm kind of the old move mount and shoot kind of guy. I like things looking smooth. Because with a face like this, you need something that looks good. And I'd like for it to be my shooting technique. Especially if people don't watch whether I hit or miss or not. I had fits with this when I first got it. Uh, after today, and I just finished shooting. After today, I probably got 500 rounds, 550 rounds through it. Today, it started to feel like my gun. I started hitting with it. I had set the comb according to a gun I have at home that I shoot well after I struggled with this, came down and shot high. I mean, really high. So I dropped it all the way down flat, one and a half by two. And uh, then I found that I really have to make an effort to flatten my head out and get into the gun a little bit. Not face scrunching, you know, distort your cheek kind of stuff. I won't do that. Recoil bothers me too much. But once I started getting into the gun, then the consistency came. So 
the first box of shells I was here today, I would have been tempted to throw it away. The last box of shells, I thought, hey, this thing's working pretty good. Because it is smooth. It's got enough weight that it moves very well. Uh, for me, it's not a swing-through gun. I got, you know, obviously you have to do a little bit of that, but I just wouldn't recommend it to anybody that shoots a lot of swing-through, but what do I know? I don't shoot swing-through. Uh, I have to stay out in front and then adjust from there. So pull away or a maintained lead or a stretch lead, you know. I like to come in about half and half with my lead pictures and that ensures that the gun's moving quicker than the target, which is always a good thing. And you're getting a little stretch in there at the end. So it's, I guess a hybrid pull away, whatever it is, you know what I'm talking about, because if you shoot much, you don't do the textbook shooting techniques. You figure out what works for you and you go with that. So if you are looking at the Kriegoff X or the parkour, at least make a real effort to handle both the guns because you may find that the parkour offers you what you want in a finer fashion than the X does. And there's not nearly as long a waiting list. You can actually find some used and save some money. Some people don't like to buy used guns. I like to save money. It's the Irish blood in me. So this gun, by virtue of the deal I got, is going to save me enough money to buy some shells and Thankfully, it's getting to where you can find those shells. So Kriegoff K80, should you have any questions I didn't cover, feel free to get a hold of me, and I'll be happy to answer anything I can. I'm not a genius, but I've been around guns enough and tinkered with enough of them that I get a pretty good feel for what's going on in there. So, uh, oh, one other caveat. If you're not familiar with the Kriegoff, when you go to put the barrels on before you do that, I strongly recommend you go on YouTube and find Kriegoff's video on how to put the barrels on. They aren't a hang them on the hooks and flip them up installation like we are so used to with everything else. You have to kind of get them back fairly level at the face of the breech, push them down and they'll drop in and then go forward and you're good. Taking them off then the, the uh, rotating action seems to work. So just a little caveat there because you could really bugger things up and there start scratching your action and everything should you take the hard road so videos there it's great it's not very long there's some other really useful videos just to give you some ideas the people at Kriegoff know the guns better than anybody else hope you all have a great day i hope you all can find shotgun shells and i hope you all get a chance to go out and shoot them up take care